Hello. Andy. Hello. Welcome to another broadcast from the Beach Hut. I'm Andy Crane, but that can't be helped. And along with Gabby, Neil and Steve, I had the pleasure of hosting the last series of Motormouth. Now I have the equal pleasure of bringing you some of the highlights from that series. This week we have the incredibly nice and now hugely successful Take That. I meet Spider-Man creator Stan Lee, and there's another episode of Mousetrap with another four-star prize up for grabs. But while you get to grips with part one, I've just got to nip down to the post office and post this. Because it's good to receive a letter. Sunshine's book, Fifty Journeys to the Planet Relaxation, I have been able to take everything in my stride. I mean, I just feel so wonderfully and totally relaxed. Is that the mail? Yeah. Good, because Andy and Steve were asking for it. Right. It's all here, is it? Yeah, it's all there. It's all there. I've done it all. Nothing's missing. No. So you're just keeping that one in your jumper warm for a while, are you? This one? Yes. It's, um, it's personal. Millie, I am so sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I... Please, please forgive me. Yes. I didn't mean to pry. Right. Is it good news or bad? Medium. Oh, one of your boyfriends hasn't chucked you, has he? No. Oh, Millie, your application to the magic circle hasn't been turned down again. Well, not yet. Oh, good. Your mother's not coming, is no. she? No. Good. I mean, good time to get on. <laughs> see you, uh, see you later. Okay. It's just that you seem rather upset. No, no, Juliet. No, I'm not upset. I'm fine, really. Really? Really, I'm not upset. No, no, I I'm not upset. See you later, then. Guys, this is brilliant! Spider-Man's my favorite character. Can you draw him? Oh, it's yeah. me a lot of money. All right. <laughs> Hello, Maidstone Police. Yes, this is Maxwell Church. Some vandals have broken into the studio and they're terrorizing us with graffiti. Max, have you met the comic artists? They're on the show today. Sorry, the number you've called is not available. Paul! What's going on? Oh, listen, can you take them to their dress rooms? It's three, four, and five, okay? Who are you to boss me around? General Schwartz, cop. Oh, Max, I'm sorry. It is my job. I should take care of it, I know. But I've got to get the door. Guys, can you All right, just could, could you come with me? Thanks. Um, right, your dressing room's three, four, and five. So that's through to the end of the corridor. Quiet when going past the studio doors, up the stairs, and it's a uh, third on the left. Right! Oh, this is Maxwell Church. He'll be taking care of you today. Max, this is the band. Yes, hi, hi Gary. Yeah, yeah, take right. that. Yeah. Can I take that? Yeah. Right, come on, come on. Oh, <laughs> right. Gary, Howard, Mark, Jason, and Robbie. Right, just the end of the corridor, and um, up the stairs, and it's first on the left. Yeah, oh. Right, um, Paul, kindly consult me next time. You want to encourage people to deface the reception area? Max, this is comic art. Comic art? Ha ha ha! Don't make me laugh. I thought it would brighten things up a little bit. Besides, we're redecorating. Yes, I know we're redecorating, but not during a live show. You're right, Max. I am. Yes, I am. And you're going to help me fix it, so snap to it. Red and umber. Red on its own. Red on its own. Red and umber together. Now, where's the paint? I think it's under the sink. Red. Red and umber. Green. Yeah, how about a sort of ready amber -y kind of effect? No, I think we should just stick with the green below and the amber above. Max, your taste gets worse every day. It's really bad karma to mix green and amber. No, um, it's just what we're used to. Well, it's okay, because we've decided to go with the blue. Blue? Isn't a blue. Wait a minute, what are you talking about? Steve Suit. What are you talking about? Redecorating reception. <laughs> Millie, what are you talking about? Traffic light. And why? Because I'm learning how I could. And why? To have an interim driving lesson. Look <laughs> <laughs> out, world. Why didn't you say that? <laughs> because I thought you might laugh. Oh, no, Millie. Yeah, we just tease you a little bit. We'll yeah. all pitch in and help of you pass your test. Look, Millie, I'm really good at the highway code. I can test you on this. And I can take you out for a few spins. Have you got the car? Yeah, me Auntie Beryl's had her car insured oh. for me. Oh, Millie, listen, between us, we will make you the best driver on the road. Yeah. No, no, yeah. I, I don't think you understand. You see, I applied for my test, mm -hmm. and I got a cancellation. Oh, really? And the thing is, yeah. Yeah. it's at quarter to eleven today. Here's a question for you. What has a worldwide annual turnover of $500,000 million dollars is recognized as the fourth best investment on the Dow Jones Commodity Index and is also known as the ninth art. You or I would know the industry as comics, but it's more commonly referred to as... In fact, there is the comic. Thank you very much indeed, finally. Panelology, or comics. Comics like this I'm sure you're familiar with, but have you ever seen a comic like this? At 250 feet long, it's the longest comic ever drawn. It was drawn by 125 of the world's best comic artists at the Trocadero in London 
in less than eight hours. All the money raised went to uh, the Cartoon Centre in London. But in the world of comics, there's a man you've got to talk to, and he's lurking in our cafe this morning. He's the publisher of Marvel. He created characters like Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, the Fantastic Four, the Incredible Hulk, and completely reformed my childhood, Stan Lee. Andy, what a pleasure to be here. Welcome to Motormouth, sir. Thank you. What do you mean when I say that comics are the knowing part of graphic novels? What does that mean? Comics are actually novels with pictures and with words, but they're valid reading just like anything else. You mm -hmm. know, they're great stories, you, and you have to be able to read them. You can't enjoy a comic if you don't read. Some people think, well, you're not reading if you're reading a comic. You don't read those words, and if you don't understand them, you can't understand the story. But what about people that say it's just violent escapist fantasy, then, and it's not educational? Well, when you say educational, some teachers have said that comics are the greatest weapon in the war against illiteracy, because they're the only things that youngsters will read voluntarily, in I fact, did. eagerly. I did. Right. Well, you can't, as I say, the more you read comics, the more you become facile at reading. Yeah. And naturally, once you become a good reader, you go on to read other things. Nobody just reads comics. Absolutely. Although I wish they would, we'd sell more comics. Absolutely. There's a massive interest in Hollywood, though, in the moment, in, uh, in bringing comic strip characters to the big screen. There's been Batman, right. Batman 2 right. is coming, Dick Tracy. Why this sudden interest in comics? Well, I think people are realizing that comics are really like fairy tales for grown-ups. You know, they have fantasy, they have adventure, they have color, they're bigger than life. And yet, you hope they have good characterization and you care about the characters. Did you know that um, James Cameron, who did The Terminator, he's now doing a Spider-Man feature-length movie, and really? he says, I want to make this the biggest movie of all time. Well, I should look forward to seeing that. Um, how do you create a superhero, Stan? I mean, I read Doctor Strange avidly as a kid and, and still do a case in Fantastic Four, Incredible Hulk. Where do these characters come from? Well, mostly from your brain, I guess. You have to think them up. But the thing to do is you try to think of what is colorful and what is unusual and what would kids like to read see with dr strange i thought everybody's interested in magic yeah, he's a magician, so i'll get yeah. somebody who's a magician with spider-man i was trying to get a new ha uh, character and i said what if somebody could crawl on the wall you know and i thought gee wouldn't that be fun so first i would call him insect man yeah. but that somehow didn't sound glamorous then i thought of mosquito man and that didn't really do it and then spider-man the name just seemed to to be wonderful. And he's now, he's now a cult hero. Of all the characters you've created, and I know this is an incredibly difficult question, but which is your favorite? I think probably Spider-Man. Spider-Man is really to Marvel comics, like Mickey Mouse is to Disney. Right. You know, everybody thinks of him when they think of Marvel, and uh, now that the movie is coming on, it has to be Spider-Man. Well, what about British characters, bearing in mind that he's looking down at us at the moment? Have you, have you a favorite British character? For well, if you think there's any way, I won't say uh, Judge Dredd, when he's that big and he's that frown. And that man can frown better than anybody. I, I think, don't. I think he's wonderful, and Stan, I've read him for years. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, this guy over here, here is uh, Judge Dredd. If you've never read 2000 AD, he's probably one of the greatest British comic characters at the moment. Um, now we've found out how the superheroes are formed. How are they drawn? Dave Gibbons is probably the best man to ask about that. Uh, London Cartoon Centre. What is the Cartoon Centre? The London Cartoon Centre is a charitable organisation, the only one of its kind in the country that exists to teach people how to do comic art, which is a much neglected thing. And as an artist, when somebody like Stan comes up with a character, how much of a brief do you get? Does Stan tell you exactly what, you, what he wants or is it all left to you? Well, normally you'd have a discussion with the writer and you get an idea of the, the kind of attributes that the character should have and it's a question of making those flesh, you know, expressing that in a graphic way, making them very big or very wiry or very agile. You've drawn obviously Watchmen and you've certainly drawn Dread for 2000 AD. What tips can you give people at home who might want to like, draw comic characters? Well, you know, comics is a kind of a shorthand medium and you have to really bring out the essential characteristics of the character and do everything you can to give them a clear and easily understandable shape yeah. um, that can be repeated so that they always look the same. What would they be with Dread, for example? Well, you know, Dread has got this very broad shoulders with these pads on it, but his main thing is his chin which is very dimply and very wrinkly, and this tremendous frown, you know, which must use a, a lot yeah, of energy. He's forever scowling all the way through the strip, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, Okay, how does a comic put together? I mean, we've got, we've got the, I think, the different processes of, for our Motormouth special, so come around and explain to us okay, how comics... Well, yes. We're producing a, a Motormouth comic, and uh, it starts off once the script has been established. Uh, the whole thing is drawn out in pencil, as Paul's doing here. Uh, the main thing in the pencils is that you've got to get the expression and the composition mm -hmm. uh, and all the essentials laid out. So it's drawn in pencil. What happens next? Uh, well, then the pencil drawings uh, are drawn over in ink, as uh, Jennifer's doing here, so that they can be reproduced. Most comics are black and white. Yeah. Um, is there room for a mistake if you're inking it in, or is that kind of permanent? 
Oh no, you can always correct a mistake. You can blodge some white paint over it or stick another piece of white paper over it. You should never be worried about making a mistake. Fabulous. <laughs> Uh, but some comics are left in black and white, but there, there is a third stage, isn't there? Sure. Well, nowadays, increasingly, comics are drawn in, in colour, um, and Dermot here is adding the, the, the colour to this, which gives it a lot more excitement and uh, makes the thing a whole lot more realistic. Sit back a bit, Dermot, so we'd like to see your artwork here. It's a fabulous picture of Dredge you've drawn. Yeah. Uh, right. Is it a laborious process, filling it in? Is it, is it all still done by hand, the, the colouring in, or can you do that with a computer now? Well, they are bringing computers in a bit, but I don't think you're ever going to dispense with the artist, fortunately. Somebody's got to drive the computer in the same way they've got to drive a pen or a, a brush. Brilliant. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for coming in. You get okay. back to working on the Motormouth comic because we have an exclusive competition. Oh, yes. This was yours, I think. We found um, that back one of One of the last things we need is uh, a sound effect, which fits very Bam! nicely there. Crash! Kapow! It's just like Batman. You see, Max, it is tricky. If you're coming out of a blind intersection and turning left onto a one-way street... Hang on! What are you painting Spaghetti Junction there for? I want smooth, clean strokes. Sorry, Max. But I can't help thinking that Juliet's got the wrong approach. What we need to do is encourage a positive mental attitude to the experience she's about to have, so she can project oh. herself and... If you're trying to get out of the decorating, you can forget it. Oh, I'm sorry, Max. Now, I've got to choose a color to paint the dado here. Oh, hey, how about pink with green flecks? I could do some artistic spattering. Oh, sorry, Max. <sighs> Get a grip on yourself. Good heavens. Now, what color do you think? Oh, I don't know. Where's the color chart? I don't know. It's here a minute ago. According to Ros Sunshine, you can use certain colors to alter your mood. She says that purple is associated with insanity, so that wouldn't be a particularly good one for you to look at just before your test, no. Lee. Whereas green is very pastoral, and that's very, very calming. Right. So we'll just try some colors out on you, and you yeah. tell me what they make you think of, okay? okay. Right. Blue. The sea. Good. Uh, yellow. A yolk, yes, and pink, uh, marshmallows, right. So let's sum up. We've got um, the sea, egg yolk, and marshmallows. So how does that make you feel? Sick. Yeah, me too. Right. Oh. Well, where's the paint then? Max. The color chart. Oh, thank Get you. Get away. It's making us feel sick. So you know what I was saying to Max is we need to do some therapy on Millie. Yes, I've been trying. Now listen, Millie, I'm going to do this thing. It's called acclimatization therapy, but it doesn't hurt, okay? Yeah. I'm just going to describe a situation, and I want you to tell me how it makes you feel, okay? All right. You're showing up at the driving center, and you're meeting your instructor. Scared. Okay, okay. Um, it's a week before your test, and you've just found out when it is. Really scared. Okay. It's five years before your test, and you just see someone get into a car. Petrified. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Something else. Positive visualization therapy. Okay, get up here. Yeah. Now, uh, we're okay. going to pretend... Paul, could I have you no, I need you here, Max. Okay, you've passed your test. Okay. And we're just all going for a drive on the next day, Brilliant. okay? Yeah, you guys yeah. sit in the back seat. Okay, all right, come on, Max. Back seat. Oh, no, it's stupid. Please, don't be a killjoy, Max. Max. Get in the car. All right, well, you'll have to get out of my way because it's a hatchback. Oh, Max. Max. Okay, come on. Right. And seat belts on everybody. Oh, Thank yes. you. Okay. Mm. Into first gear, mirror, signal, manoeuvre, and we're off. Very mm. smooth. Good. Into second. Mm. And we're going round the roundabout. Mm. Oh. <laughs> well done, Millie. No wonder you passed your mm. test first time. Thanks, Paul. Where are we going anyway? Where are we going? Um, we're going to the seaside. Oh, what, the seaside on the 16th of November will freeze. Paul, Max, we're not going to the seaside to swim. We're going to the seaside to have a cup of tea and a scone. I think you'll find that scone. Depends how well you were brought up, actually. Look, if you kids don't stop arguing, we're going to turn the car around and go right back home. What's gone? Nothing's gone. Mind your own business. A bit like a muffin, Paul. Oh, like an English muffin. No, okay. like an American sort of muffin. We're going round and round Look, about backwards have at 3,000 miles an hour. Well, there's one good reason why we can't do that. Yeah, you can't park in Maidstone. Yes, and also we just passed it 10 minutes ago. Well, we can turn now. Oh, um, what are they doing? Go uh, they're going, going to the seaside. Fluffy scones in Maidstone. Well, who's driving? No, I am. Come back after the break and find out whether Max, Juliet and Paul make it to the seaside and how Gabby got on with Take That in one of their earliest television interviews. Little did we know it was going to be history in the making. In this part, Gabby and two lucky competition winners get to meet Take That in one of their earliest television interviews. And there's a performance of Promises. And Millie gets to go out on the open road, which is why, even with the wisdom of hindsight, I'm opting for the open sea to stay out of the way. Why do you think you need to learn to drive? Well, I thought you... Don't you have everything you want in your city blocks? No. Now, the mega ways are crowded enough as it is. 
Just ask yourself, is my journey really necessary? Because of overcrowding, we have up to 18 million mopeds constantly circling the just city. Just right, just right. I've got a car, not a moped. You know what the speed limit is? Yes, I do, actually. 250 kph on the megaways. Well, I can't go that fast oh. in my car. Well, driving too slowly is a crime. All vehicles, they should be computer controlled now, by the you judges. you need to speak to Paul because I don't know That's anything my about computers. Red. Don't interrupt! Oh, sorry. <laughs> then the traffic would flow properly and safely. Your destination would be punched into a keypad. Oh, well, that's all very interesting, Judge Dredd, but... What uh, do you want? Oh, well, there's just a couple of little kids out there who just want your autograph. I don't what? sign autographs. Oh, well, I know you normally sign autographs, but I thought just in this case you might make an exception. I said I don't sign autographs. Whoa! Whoa! You're not going to let him get away with that, are you? I was thinking about it, actually. Oh. The biggest cause of accidents is people. The most irrational beings on this planet. Now, people just won't wait. They use four. Okay, Judge, now you've really made me mad. Eight floor, creep. Whoa! Uh, streets are full of perps. There's always some creep behind you. Huh. Waiting to bag himself a judge. Now, this can be very dangerous. I'm getting very tired of you, creep. <laughs> Now, Citizen Millie, where were we? The five lovely boys from Manchester. Right. Sorry, guys, right. let's get it in. Lovely boys. And Emma and Joanne, you met at the top of the show. Well, this is their opportunity to meet the heroes. But wait, wait, I'm going to introduce you lot before you do that, okay? Yeah. We've got Gary, Howard, Mark, Robbie, and Jason. Okay, go for it. Say hello to each other. Yeah. And no, not quite like that. Thank you very much. Enough, enough. Okay. No, 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 leave them alone. Come here, right. You two sit in your special, special chairs. And, uh, you five, oh, they're such flirts, you five, get over there, yes, take that, they're single promises, watch out for the song, watch out for the dance, and girls, watch out especially for the flick flacks. That's it, of course, oh, sometimes my genius and agency to me. Where did you spring from? I materialized like your bad conscience, Paul. It's okay, Max. I've finished the painting. Yes, but there's all the papering and pasting to be done. Look, Max, I've had this brilliant idea. Look, all right, tell me. You've got four seconds. Go on. Okay. What we do is, like the guy making the, 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 the things out of nothing, I'm going to make Millie a car out of nothing, and we're going to have this mock test. And Hands up. Oh, what do you think? I think, Paul, like all your other harebrained schemes, it's not going to come off. Well, you see, I was being too cerebral before. Millie's life is not in the mind. No, oh, goodness knows that's true. No, she needs hands-on practical experience. Well, I fail to see why Millie sitting on a fire extinguisher is going to help her pass her driving test. Well, I need more time, Max. I just haven't got it together yet. All right, well, follow me closely. I think you need to get some fresh air, Millie. Yeah, I don't think anything's going to work. I'm still wobbling like a jellyfish. Oh. Well, perhaps you should have a cup of herbal tea, like fennel and rhubarb. I mean, she says it's very relaxing. Juliet, I don't want anything else to drink. I've been to the toilet enough times already this morning. Say no more. Okay, let's try some deep breathing. Chapter 10. Okay, assume the position. Yeah. Millie, no, your hands are like reindeer. Oh, just relax them. Sorry. Okay, and again. Let's put them on your lap. Okay, and now, deep breathing. Yes. In for five, hold for five, and out for five. And as you breathe, I want you to forget all about your pets. You've been driving yourself too hard. You're exhausted. You need a break. Try to change gears, to slow down. And soon you'll find yourself moving slowly along the road to relaxation. How do you feel? Maybe you look dreadful. Oh, but just keep breathing. In for five. One, two, three, four, five. And hold. Oh, hello. Hello, Juliet Nichols. Welcome to Motor Mouth. Hi, Billy Joe. Billy Joe, hello. Well, I'm Joe Billy. Joe Billy? Joe Billy, Joe yeah. Billy, Billy Joe. Hey, your right. friend, uh, she looks kind of seasick. Oh, no, she's just a little bit nervous. She's got her driving test, you see. Oh, so oh yeah, right, yeah. Breathe out, Millie! Max, do you remember what you said to Millie this morning? Millie, what have you done with my Garibaldi? No, you said you'd help her out with her driving test. Now, I thought an Englishman's word was his bond. Well, I'd love to help her, but what can I do? And um, boys, and this is Jilly Boeing and Joey Jit. These are the surface. Hi. Hi, Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> Say hello, Max. Hello, Max. Oh, listen, I'm really worried about Millie. Excuse me a minute. She's just not responding to these alternative methods of relaxation. Well, I had this idea that we could build her this little car and have a circuit inside the backstage oh, area. Brilliant. Deal with life's problems in a microcosm. Exactly. Now, look. Stop being ridiculous, Paul. You said so yourself. Millie does not live in her own mind. So how are you expected to grasp the, the concept of running around backstage and pretending she's in a car, I don't know. Good point, Max. Good point. Thank you. 
What she really needs, you see, is to get in a real car, mm -hmm. get her hands on the wheel, mm -hmm. get her feet on the pedals, with and take it out on the open road with an experienced by driver by her side who is intelligent, intelligent mature. and who is mature He's wearing, and a, brown overcoat. wearing a brown coat. You, you are, are that man. man. <laughs> Lily, I don't know why, but I am that man. So please, get on your hat and coat. We're going for a spin. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. Right, right. After three, right, three. Mr. Kaiser, I'm really sorry to break the karmic atmosphere and everything, but I have to say I'm a little overheard about Max and Minnie. <laughs> yes, they just left two minutes ago. They're probably still in the car park. What yeah. did they do? Oh, a couple of friends of ours are taking a driving lesson. Oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's okay, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's okay, <laughs> don't worry about it. Right then, Miss Bates, we are ready to commence your mock test. Max, yes? what do you call him a Miss Bates for? Because I'm going to conduct this lesson as your real test will be, so you know where you stand. Okay. Without your hat. Rule number one, never flatter the instructor. Thank you. Right, eyesight first. Can you read that license plate over there? Which one? With the one that says D644EYY. -Y. No, I need my glasses. No. Roadhog. Ah! Oh! Auntie Vero's missing. Sort them out, Miss Pink. They're all in one box. Right, now we'll deal with hand signals. Okay. <clears throat> what do you do if you intend to make a left turn? Oh. No, you do not smack the instructor in the face. I'm sorry. That's no good I'm to sorry. anybody. Can I do, can I do right? Yes, do right, right. I was right at the next turn. What, what happened to the right? I'm sorry. Go right. Just go right, right. Go right. You know, that, that helps right. me doing right. No, I said right. Right down there. I'm sorry. Right, when I strike the dashboard, I want you to perform for me an emergency stop. Okay. No, 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 no. You took it, there's a... No, there's a fly in here. Max, we're going to have a serious accident in a minute. What do you mean there's a fly? Are you all right? Good heavens. Indicate this hand. Right, okay, left hand down. Yes. Left hand down. Paying due care and attention to the signals. Left hand down. I left, am hand left hand down. down. Right, left hand down. No. Right, right hand up. Left hand down. Due care and attention. Not ignoring the markings. I'm not ignoring the markings. No, on a roundabout, you must pay attention to the markings and give way to the right. Well, what are we going back this way for? Because I thought this is the way you wanted to You see, you can't follow instructions. Okay, so the red light is indicating, and what does that say to you? It says that a train is coming. Okay, now define the function of a level crossing. A level crossing is here, so that you don't get stuck on the track and get leveled by the train. It's taking its time, this train, isn't it? In fact, it's broken down. Miss Bates. Miss Bates. Miss Bates. Miss Bates. What? Sorry. Okay. You can come back now. Yes, we're doing very well. Yeah, I'm not doing bad, am I? I know I was a bit nervous to start with, but my confidence is there now. I can feel it. I think you'll pass with flying colours. Great. So what do you call this, Max? A dual carriageway? No, it's more of a... a runway. Miss, Miss Bates, <laughs> what have you done? Of course we've got those five lovely guys from Manchester. Take that with the competition winners, and we are going to get straight on to your grilling, boys. Grilling. Yeah, okay, go. you ready? Oh, don't say anything then. You ready? Yeah, I'm yeah, ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emma, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're first up with your question. Emma, if you'd like to give your first question. How long have you known each other? Mark, yeah. Well, it started off like this. Um, it's been about two years now. Me and Gary were working together, and Jason and Howard. And then we put pit Robbie up on the on the roadside with a sign saying uh Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> so about two years now, you just yeah, yeah, about two. 
Right, I'm glad, uh, Joanne, your next question. If I were you, I'd do interview. What question wouldn't you want me to ask you? Can I ask that one? Answer that one? Yeah, please oh, do. No. If you were my ideal interviewer, which you are, apart from Gabby, of course, oh, I wouldn't yeah. like you to ask me... Uh, <coughs> What question wouldn't you like to be asked? Actually, I wouldn't like that. It's, a, good one. it's a very That's difficult a good one, one yeah, to answer. Yeah, it's a bad one. Um, Gary, I've got to ask you what's the question that you wouldn't like to ask, to be asked. Uh, do you dye your hair? Well, <laughs> well, well. I dye, I dye my eyebrows black. <laughs> of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> Emma, how about you? Good question. What makes you the most nervous? Oh, okay. Nervous. What makes me the most nervous? Um, well, you make me most nervous. <laughs> no, um, I think it's just before going on stage, you know, wondering whether your pants are going to split or not. Your pants? Uh, which, in one case, it's happened to Robbie, hasn't it? Tell us the story, please. Yeah. Story time. Well, it's like this. I was really, oh, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> I was really going for it on stage, and there was these girls, and I was giving it loud to that. And then I went down and did the splits, yeah. and then I came back up again. I'd got, like, no trousers at all. <laughs> It went down well, we went down really well that day. My trousers went down really well. I certainly hope that doesn't happen this morning. Mm. Joanne, your next question. Name two the most mouthful, which would make great ambition. Yeah, of course, most mouthful is the biggest ambition in life. I think it's just my ear again, definitely. Yeah? Yeah, come on, Mark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please, Mr. Yeah. 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 Now, what's your greatest on, ambition then, Jason? I think, yeah, after appearing on Mark's mouth, I'll do, um, I'm a hit single, hopefully. Yeah. Well, you will. And yeah. a hit album, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then a world tour. Yeah. In that order. Well, how about, whereabouts in the world would you sort of most like to visit? Ashton. We're big in Ashton. <laughs> We're big in Ashton. Australia. I fancy Australia, mate. Australia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought you might say that. Don't show them how to do this, so you mentioned. Yeah, yeah. You're going to go and show them how to do it? That's it, yeah. Wow. There's something to say. Right, we're going to go into the audience now. Nicola. Nicola, you've got a question for the guys. If you was invisible for a day, who would you follow and why? Oh, good question. Good question. Um, Who's going to pick that one up? I think, I think I'd know. follow uh, David Attenborough. He like travels all over the world, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, and you he get to, to go in the jungle and all that business. I think I'll follow Gary as well. Yeah. <laughs> See all those animals in, in yeah. real life. And uh, we've got one more question for the audience. Gemma. There you are, Gemma. Who makes up your dance routines and which one of you makes the most mistakes? Oh, mm. right, okay. Well, uh, it's, it's me and Jason who make up the routines. And they, they make the most mistakes. <laughs> you both make the most mistakes. Oh, yeah. oh, we, we make, we make the like, same amount of mistakes. So um, when we come off stage, we slap each other's heads if we, <laughs> we go wrong. What happens if you make a mistake? If you fall over, do you just uh, get no, up just and go? Laugh. No, you get the sack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll be you watching you carefully. The on the stage. That was the first of many appearances by Take That on Local Mouth. And even back then, everyone agreed that A, they were really nice lads, and B, they were destined for stardom. And I'll tell you something, they haven't changed a bit. After the break, the mouth of mates and Steve Johnson rampages through another episode of Mousetrap, and there's more from Take That. But as Millie is still out on the road, I'm stopping here. See you in a minute. <laughs> Yo ho ho and a thermos of stewed tea. Thank you for joining me for this last part of Motormouth. If you're a Take That fan, we've a vintage performance of Do What You Like. If you're a Steve Johnson fan, we've got some mousetrap. And if you're a fan of Neil and myself, well, we're not in this bit. Ooh, hey. Save yourselves! Well, at least I'm still alive. Oh, what happened? If that girl passes her test, I'll eat my foot! Max, there's no wallpaper on that bit. Hey, listen, why don't you relax? I think you need to lie down or something. Lie down while the live show's on? Are you mad? Oh, sorry, Max. Yeah. Shredding the glass wall. Shredding the glass wall. That's very, right. very... I like saying it, but I'm not sure I know what it means. Well, it means you got the green. Oh, you've got the green, exactly. Um, the, the server's been leaving. Oh, right. Yo, guys. Yo. Yo. Say Yo. goodbye, Max. Goodbye, Max. Hey, chill out, man. Catch some waves. Yes, that's good advice. Sorry about him. Okay. Nice to see you then. Ciao. Okay, Ciao. Bye. Bye. Max, you are behaving very, very impolitely to our guests. I think that you should, you should calm down, Max. You've had a stressful day. I, I think you need a nice long tea break. Oh, Juliet. Yes. Oh, Juliet. Oh, yes, you're right. I am, yes. That's just what I needed. Yes, you do. A tea break. I shall go and butter you a currant oh, bun and you. make you a lovely cup of chamomile tea. Now, wait one minute. You know I can't drink that stuff. It just, it just, it just makes me fall asleep. It does? Yes. One cup of that and I'm out cold. Oh, but Max, no it's terribly good for you. Look, I want my Indian blend. None of your herbal muck. One cup of non-herbal muck Indian blend coming up, Mr. Grumpy. Well, Juliet's going to be really happy about making you a cup of tea. Oh, don't get pious with me. Oh, yes. One bag full, Max. Two bags full, Max. Anything you can say, Max. Taste, Max. And a 
Kill your old black and gas. Oh, working with Max is proving really challenging today. Yes, but poor dear, he has had a hard day. Yes, well, I suppose he did go out driving with Millie. Yes, and that would try even the patience of a saint. Let alone the patience of a Max. Still, I'd really like to ram all these current bonds down his throat at the same time. Yeah, and I'd like to hold his legs while you're doing it. Yeah. Honestly, he's been bossing me up and down the show. It's just intolerable. He's almost as bad as you. Almost as efficient as you, I mean. I thought that's what you said. Hey, look, that tray's probably really heavy. Um, why don't I just take that? Oh, thanks, Paul. Okay. Okay, let's see what we got here. Chamomile, sleepy time. Perfect. Okay. Sweet dreams, Max von Church. And here are your buns, dear. What? Eat dry buns? What do you want me to have? Indigestion or something? Take your tube be here in it. A... Now, now, here. Thank you. It tastes a bit odd. Oh, uh, Max. Wine, dear, have some milk with it. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Right. Oh. oh, that hits the spot. Okay, now, back to work. Max, there is a little corner of uh, wallpaper coming down up there, so if you could just uh, take this brush and uh, stick it up. Thanks. This surfing guy's a group. I know. What did they say to you? I don't know. I didn't have to find a word of it, but... Uh, did they say shooting the tube? Something like that. Max. Max. Corner. Corner? What is the matter with you? Are you okay? Yes. Wallpaper. Corner. Oh. Stick. It's written to me. It says, Dear Mouse Mouth, I don't think you're being fair to Steve because everyone makes mistakes. I can't wait till Mouse Rap comes on because I like it a lot. And that's from Lorna Frost. Cheers, Lorna. <laughs> Look at that. Come here. <laughs> uh, I doesn't say that at all, Were you wearing your glasses when you read this? No, I don't wear glasses. Oh, maybe you should, Steve. Oh, right. Cheers. Try, yeah, try that. Uh, uh, no, I can hardly see it. You want us to do it for you? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 Steve, I can't wait till Mouse Rap comes back because I like it a lot, but we don't think you hit Steve enough because he's always making mistakes. P.S. Steve, you'd be better if you hit yourself with a haddock. No, that's a wet haddock, Neil. That's wet. Very a wet haddock? haddock. Oh, 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 right. Haddock, yeah. uh, uh, thanks, Max. Oh, I think I should keep these glasses, shouldn't I? Yeah, I think no you should. Problem. Yeah, Cheers, Dick. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, And don't forget the, uh, the wet haddock. Oh, right. Thanks, lads. You, you're always good to me, aren't you? We try, no Steve. Problem. Cheers. Try. Cheers, cheers. Uh, coming up now is, uh, uh, mousetrap. Uh, uh, thanks a lot, Lorne. <laughs> These are my little contestants today. Your name is? Mark, and my hobbies are football and judo. Well, I used to do a bit of judo, you know. I used to be quite good. I was a green belt, I think. What's your um, second name? Wells. Mark Wells, right. And your name is? My name's Samantha Yap. I'm 11, and my hobbies are singing and dancing. Oh, well, I'm a bit of a dancer, you know. You know, you a good dancer? I hope so. Right, let's have a look at our little helpers today. They are Kelly Jones and Gavin Barry. <laughs> Now you know the rules, don't you? You know you've got to do it in seven minutes, don't you? You sure about that? Do you think you're going to do it in seven minutes? Yep. Right, let's have a look at our four-star prize this week. It is a colour TV! Ooh. Okay. Do you think you're going to win? Do you think you're going to be taking that telly home with you? Yeah. Well, we'll soon find out, because are we ready? Yeah! All right, let's do the count, shall we? Three, two, two one, go! That's a good Come on, 
Let's go for bed. Come on, ransom, ransom your feet. Come on, all of them. Right, one's gone away. Never mind. Let's onto here. Right, this is very important. This, this is the memory square. Under here are ten objects. I want you to remember them in ten seconds. Put your thinking caps on. Here we go. We've got a cuddly toy. Got a ball of string. Got a feather. A clock. A sweet key. Four seconds. Watch. Everything? You got all of that? All right, here we go, here we go. Move on, okay. I want three balls through, okay? Bit of net ball here. Three balls through. Come on, you can do it, come on. Have another go. Oh, come on, you're throwing them really badly. Come on, come on, pick them up. Pick them up. We got one. We got two. And we got three. I'll see the here. All right. This is a human body, these are all parts of it. Put the right part on the body. Alright. Take your time on this one. Heart, that's correct. Tonsils is correct. What do you think the funny bone is? Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah, there's where the funny bone is. Right. The liver, that's about correct now. That's the last one. Achilles tendon. Achilles tendon. Footballers get bad Achilles tendon. What do footballers do? They kick a ball. Where do you think their Achilles tendon is? Right on their ankle. It's correct. Watch them tie around square. Stop the clock. <laughs> Turn this way so they can see you at home. Can they see you over this game? That's what I want to know. Let's have a look. You've got down this first side. You, you absolutely whiz straight down it. Let's see what you've won. You've won this chemistry in action. Ooh. Down this way, shall we? Down this way. Come this way. Come this way. All right. You're going to be banging in front of us. You don't want to see that. We want to see her as much as we want to see you. You've got about five and a half minutes left to finish the game in. You're doing well. All right. Have a look down this side. Take your time. But let's get going. Right, through there. Take your time through there. Come on. One at a time. Come on, Mark. Come through. Right. Out you come. Help Mark out. Help Mark out. Come on, drag him out. Right, onto here. Okay. I want you to remember four things off that memory square. Banana, yeah. apple, glasses, 50p. 50p is correct. Onto the next one. Right, see if you can knock these skittles down. One go. Go on. Go on. And, and again. Have another go. Yeah! Onto this puzzle. All right. Now, all these will match if you rhyme them together. So have a go. Read it out to me. What mimes is snake? Spike. Right. right. Put it together then. Snake and rake. Correct. What's next one? Um, What's this one here? What's this one here? Um, wool and... Um, what goes with wool? Do you reckon? Um, Bull is correct. What's next? Look at the next one. What's that? Mat. No? So what's another thing for a rag? Rat, for a, 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 a mat? Um, What's that one? Tell, tell me it, tell me it, tell me it. Leg it. and leg yeah. and beetle and... Beetle and what? Oh, no, and... Yeah, that's right, but tell me what it is. Beetle and... Bug and... Bug and rug. Onto the time out square, stop the clock! <laughs> you have to talk to me in this game because I need to know if you need to know, all right? You're doing very well. You've managed to bomb down this side. Let's see what you've won. A twister and it's a booty -o game. <laughs> Right, you've got about four minutes left to do the game in, all right? You got, are, you, are you ready? You ready yeah. for this next bit? You keep tucking yourself in and undoing your back and putting bits in it. Are you ready now, Samantha? Yeah. All right, get going! Over the wall, over the wall, come on! Come on, come on! Right, who's going to be doing the miming? You're going to be doing the miming, Mark. Right, come on! Come on, Samantha, give her a hand over, Mark! You're wasting your time as well as hers if you don't give her a hand. That's all we're getting her over. Right, you're going to be doing some mining, all right? This is the mine square. What you're going to do is I'm going to show you some, I'm going to show you some different farm animals, farm animals. You'll mine them. You'll try and guess what they are, okay, Samantha? All right? But don't make any noises, Mark. All right? It's mine. It's all in silence. What's that? Go mine it. Come on, Mark. It's your time. What do you reckon that is? Come on, Samantha. It's your time. Seven minutes. Cow. Cow is correct. What's that? Have a guess what that is. Go on. Pig. Pig is correct. Uh... What's that? What's that? Mind that. Mind it. Mind it. Come on. Come on. Think, Mark. Think. Duck. Yeah. Yeah. What's this? What's this? Mind it. Pig. No. Um, you done pig. Chicken. Chicken is correct. What's that? Come on. What sort of animal makes that kind of sound? Does it? A lot of this. Come on. Come on. Think. Um, think about them. Start naming animals. Come on. 
Can we help you? People, people ride on its back. Oh, horse. Here's a horse. That's how the game is. Right, onto here. Right, start knocking the balls through, okay? I want three balls through. Come on. One. Come on. Two. Three. Onto here. Onto here. Right. This is a true or false square. I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to tell me if it's true or false. All right, are you ready? Buzz Aldrin was the first man in space. True or false? False. It's, it's false. It's quite. It was Yuri Gagarin off the time that square. Stop. The <laughs> For a second now, I thought it was true, but it is false. I'm such a dingbat. Right, let's have a look and see what you've won. You won this fantastic camera outfit. Sounds if the audience love you. All right, you've got about two minutes twenty to finish the game in. You're doing very well. If you think about this side, you can get it done in in time. What am I talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's get on, shall we? Here's a puzzle. All right. What you got to do is that's right. You've got to make out the mathematical sums. There is an odd one out. Twelve minus three is nine. Let's look. Thirty-six times thirty. Let's look. You were right on that other one. No, no. Thirty-six divided by six is six, and that's it. Seven times nine is no, it's not seven times nine, it's three times. Yes, yeah, three times nine is 27. Let's move on. All right, you've got to throw these bean bags one at a time to drop the draw pitch. All right, into the buckets. Go on, stop throwing. It's your time. Come on, one at a time, one at a time. Into the buckets, drop the draw bridge. Put your feet back, put your foot back, put your foot back. Come on, you can do it. Go on, it's nearly down. It's nearly down. It's almost there. Come on, your time's ticking away. Come on, cheer them on. Come on, you almost there? Yes, it's down, move on! Right, right, this is, this is a, a question or you could take something off the mind square. It's a choice. Do I have an answer a question or take, I remember something off the mind square? Mind square. Go on then, what do you remember? Um, a watch. Oh, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't off the tray, but it is a watch. You are correct, let's move on! All right, let's uh, throw the, let's throw the coconuts, not the balloons off, come on. Come on, knock them off, come on. Come on, it's your time, go on. You've got to hold on to another there. Right, let's move on to the time out square. Stop the clock. I was talking absolute rubbish at the end there. I didn't mean the mind square. What I meant was the memory square, but you got it right anyway, because you said a clock. Let's have a look, see what you won on this four side. It was a Connect Four and a Hero's Quest. Well done. You easily had a minute left to finish the game in. So now you're going to be playing for the colour TV, all right? Are you going to feel confident about that? Right, let's enter the trap. Come with me. Come on. All right, are you ready for this? <laughs> What's going to happen here is I'm going to ask you three questions and you've got to answer them the time it takes for the trap to fire, the ball to travel round and the cage to fall. Look under there, there's a colour TV each for you. All right, you could be taken at home if you listen carefully and answer these questions. Are you ready? Right then, fire the trap! Whose catchphrase is fan dabby dozy? Come on, pass, pass all right. It's um, Jimmy Cranky from the Crankies. What is measured on the Richter scale? The Richter scale. Um, if you don't know, pass. pass. It's earthquakes. What does an oak tree grow from? Icon. It's the correct, that's one. How many players in a netball team? Seven. Seven is correct. What type of animal is Nobby on Ghost Train? A sheep. It is sheep. Stop the trap. We stopped it just in time, didn't we? You nearly lost it, but you won the colour telly! Well done. Have you had a good time? Yes. Well, I hope you've had a good time too. We'll see you again next week with another brilliant game of... Goodbye! Wave goodbye. Okay, hey, Julia, he's sleeping like a baby. Paul, how many tea bags did you give him? Four or five. Four or five? And most some people are more susceptible to them than others. I thought it would calm him down. Calm him down, yes, not knock him out. Their reception looks brilliant. I bet you're all really tired out. Well, Max obviously is. <gasps> Millie? Oh, how did it go? Well, uh, I got to the test centre, did my sight test, got in the car, set off, did a left. Oh, right, then I went round a roundabout, did my hill start, or oh, did my three-point turn, did my reversing round a corner, then got back to the test centre, asked the, answered a couple of questions, and that was about it, yeah, but really. really. What happened? Well, no, he said did you was... pass? Oh, well, well. Just call back to Mega City. Oh, there we go. Well, I can give you a list as far as Mason if you want, because I've just passed my test. Rip those up for me.
me, Juliet. Well, then, Millie. Paul, you okay? Yeah. Listen, we passed the test. Oh, right. great. Wake up. Millie passed her driving test. It's okay. I know how to wake him up. Max, would you like a Garibaldi? <laughs> well done. Max, listen. It is brilliant news. Millie passed her test. Chumpy's tired. And Max, we've finished reception and it's completely redecorated. Yes, without your help, Paul and I have done an extremely good job. Yeah, and I have to say, Max, it does look fantastic. <coughs> it did look fantastic. Oh, blimey! My antibody is going to kill me. I've scratched a bumper. And I can testify to the fact that Auntie Beryl was not best pleased with her rearranged rear axle. Things could have got quite ugly were it not for the swift offer of a once round the park in Neil Skoda. Speaking of which, next time on Motormouth, Mr. Buchanan checks out edible insects, Miss Roslyn checks out magic, and Mr. Johnson checks out Danny Minogue. There's also music from Airhead, and another shy and retiring episode of Mousetrap. See you next time on the Family Channel. I'll leave you with Take That. Bye-bye.